Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, part two of our athlete entrepreneur with Adrian. Adrian, the streamliner Camargo, uh, <laughs> director of operations for a frugal athlete. Um, if you guys didn't listen to part one, make sure you guys tap into that. Um, it was basically how we ended 2020. Uh, for context, you know, myself and Adrian had the pleasure to meet uh, early 2020, almost a year ago. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he's done so many amazing things for a frugal athlete, helping us kind of, you know, get everything in order, build that foundation, build that structure. You guys all know I'm big on building the foundation. And then from there, we've kind of blossomed. You know, we've, we've, we've hit record numbers in terms of engagement. Uh, we've, you know, been able to pitch in front of a number of different people. I was able to make the Forbes 30 under 30. So uh, Adrian has a lot to do with that. So as we step into the new year, 2021, uh, we wanted to get Adrian uh, back on, you know, to kind of give us the rundown of, you know, where we see ourselves, where we're going and kind of uh, give you guys an inside look. You know, we talked about uh, 2020 building the foundation, how that kind of played a role. And then now uh, we want to give you like, you know, the offensive side of it. So uh, Adrian, how you doing, man? Yeah, doing well. Thanks. Thanks for having me on again. I'm excited. Uh, excited for a 2021 uh, full of new challenges and uh, lots of lots of new stuff coming. So it's gonna be a good year. No uh, respect. And just in case anyone hasn't listened to part one, give us like a quick, you know, elevator pitch on who you are. Yeah. So uh, Adrian Camargo, I found a Moby last year. Um, kind of what I do is just help uh, people and athletes kind of streamline their business and uh, organize their business. Uh, so Moby uh, needed some help in um, kind of identifying what the processes were and kind of uh, the foundation of, of his business. So I kind of helped them set that up. And uh, now we've just grown, right? We've gotten some interns and uh, we're doing lots of new stuff. We released a course last year. Um, so yeah, just kind of help out with the, with the foundation and, and building that initial um, process. No, nah, respect. Adrian, the streamliner Camargo. <laughs> uh, you talked about interns. So let's talk about that. Because, you know, last year, I started with just us, then we were able to get, you know, two to three interns, and we ended up having, you know, two solid ones over the course of, you know, the back half of 2020. But we started this year, now we got five total interns. Um, it's definitely helped with our bandwidth. Uh, but talk about the onboarding process and why these processes that we you've implemented in our system is helpful um, as you you know, try to build out and scale out your team. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so I think it's gotten better and cleaner over time, right? The first batch of interns came in like a, a month or so or right as I started. Um, so we were kind of all over the place and then we were trying to do, I think, too many things at once, uh, right? We were trying to pitch, we were trying to post consistently. Uh, we had the course idea and all that. So um, it was a little rushed, but I think as the new groups of interns came on, right, in the summer and in fall, um, I think each group got better. I think this is our, our best onboarding um, experience so far. Uh, so it, it's really just about um, documenting what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, give them documentation to read up front uh, when, uh, when they're starting. That way they have context as to what their role is, uh, what they what they're going to be doing, what the expectations are, and just how how to run things. Um, early on last year, we talked about um, not spending uh, two hours or three hours each time when a new batch of interns come in to explain what the same processes are, right? So if you have those documented, um, then you can just hand those off, and then you kind of skip that step and. Um, you're getting value uh, from your interns that they'll, they'll start uh, ramping up a lot quicker. And they'll also receive value uh, just because they're not being uh, kind of told what they're doing the first week, right? Or the first two weeks. And, um, and they just get to work and, and experience in what it is, uh, the, the, the sports media space. Um, uh, but yeah, just have everything documented, have a layout of all that, um, have something prepared, have some tasks prepared, some projects lined up. Um, I know we had one intern start um, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, he's already turned around something great. So. Um. Oh yeah, he's <laughs> yeah he, he's going places. I already know yeah. he 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 goes above and beyond. And you know, for anyone listening that you know is looking to get into the sports business space, uh, that may be young, um, when you're entered, if you can provide value, make sure you 
you know, set yourself apart in that, in that sense, uh, it goes a long way. You know, I've been an intern. I know Adrian's, you know, worked as an intern, um, you know, on his come up. Um, and those are different ways where you set yourself apart and uh, people remember that. So, um, you know, you brought up a great point about when we first started with the interns, I was telling them, you know, we need to do this course. We need to grow our channel. We need to do the newsletter. We need to do so. Talk about why it's so important to have task at hand and, you know, stick to kind of, you know, your goal and then everything else will fall into place, I guess. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think for us, Trello has been a game changer between Trello and Slack. Those are the, the two apps we probably use the most. Um, so we, we introduced that and um, I mean, it just helped with bandwidth, with assigning tasks, completing tasks, and just, just for me personally, the feeling of closing out a task and moving it to the complete folder, that to me is just like amazing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like having that end goal in mind is, is good um, and make sure you're kind of tracking along, but don't, I would suggest that you don't set um, unrealistic goals or unattainable goals. Um, make sure they're, they're feasible, make sure they're small stepping stones. Um, I think a lesson learned is when we were doing the course and we said, yeah, in three weeks, we'll turn it around or a month. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it, it took us, I mean, almost what, six months to- <laughs> Six months later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, um, plan it out, focus like, okay, um, this week, I'm going to just focus on chapter three of the course and just focus on that, do it well. Um, but yeah, always have your goals um, in, in a Trello board, on your notepad, in a spreadsheet, on your calendar, just have them laid out and make sure you're building up uh, towards that. No, that's a great point. You know, you talked about goals and, you know, one of the, the, the projects that we had, you know, when we first started in 2021 for our first, you know, onboarding meeting was, you know, everyone write down three goals. So, you know, for you, uh, what are those three goals uh, specifically from your, you know, your side of the, the playing field? And then I guess I'll share some uh, three of mine and then uh, we can go from there. And I forgot that we were supposed to do that last meeting, but um, yeah. uh, it's cool because we still got two more interns and we can wait for them. Yeah, yeah, we can wait for them. Um, yeah, I guess one of the things I'm most excited for this year and um, I, I want to meet is, I guess, pitch as many people as we can without overextending ourselves. But um, I guess I'd like to get three to five uh, clients uh, working with us with the frugal uh, between the different, uh, different, the different things we, we do. And I think we're gonna get into that a little bit later. Um, so yeah, that's, that's definitely one goal. Um, I, I have uh, another one is to kind of create more meaningful and more valuable um, content, uh, meaning doing a little bit more research up front and providing a little bit more value that way rather than just having our news post and just reporting the news, but try to give more value on the on the frugal side, on the financial side and kind of spin it that way. Um, so yeah, that's, that's another goal that um, I'd, I'd like us to consistently hit uh, at least two to three posts a week that are um, highly engaging and, and oh. of high value that people can can save and and maybe maybe on a later date like hey uh, I know you guys posted on HSA well my I just joined a company and I don't know what HSA is right so I'll pull it up um, so yeah just more engaging content and then uh, just I guess overall just growing uh, organically not not try to grow too quickly um, and I think I think this year is going to be good uh, we're going to grow uh, a lot and I think we're going to get exposure to a lot of new areas. Um, with the with the different types of content that we want to try out, right? We want to we want to yeah. try out TikTok and and some different video styles for for some of our our segments. Uh, so I'm kind of excited for that and see how it plays out. And from my side is just having a plan ready, having everything documented, and making sure that um, our our goals and our stepping stones are are small and attainable that we can actually hit that goal of um, uh, like 50,000 uh, followers on TikTok, right? I think that's yeah. our, one of our goals. So uh, making sure that we're, we're building up to that um, and that we're not just doing stuff for the sake of doing it, but we actually have a structured plan in place to actually get and meet, to meet our, meet our those. goals. Oh, that's great. And 
Um, I think all those goals are attainable, which is what you said, you know, have goals that are attainable that, you know, you can have a clear step by step uh, guideline. You know, me, I'm, I'm, I'm more like, uh, we got to have the stretch goals just to like push us. So just in case we don't get there, we at least, you know, hit. So, you know, when it comes to the three goals from a football athlete standpoint, uh, a thousand courses, if we could sell a thousand courses, um, you know, we have one course right now, Rookie Mistakes. Make sure you guys check that out. It's a, a basically a playbook for young athletes, student athletes to um, have, you know, as they reach the next level, whether it's they go pro or, you know, um, you know, get into the workforce. Um, so, um, and that's one of our courses, but we got, you know, we got a lot more in the curriculum coming out. Um, so if we could sell a thousand courses, um, I feel like we, you know, we're doing well. Um, be more aggressive. You know, you touched on that, you know, being able to pitch more people, obviously within reason, but, um, you know, we feel like we're established enough now where, you know, we can pitch an idea and they're either going to say yes or they're going to say no. So uh, I think before I was kind of hesitant. It's like, we need to make this perfect, you know, nah, not anymore. Like um, we're going to be aggressive in that front. And then um, from a social standpoint, obviously grow the channel, uh, but, you know, be more forward facing, you know, so not always, like you said, report the news, but, you know, be more dynamic. And I think, like you said, having engaging content from a financial perspective, but also uh, me sharing more. So me getting in front of camera more, whether it's doing reels, whether it's doing like personal quick sound bites, um, just, you know, coming, becoming more synonymous with a frugal athlete. So when you think of a frugal athlete, you know, you think of a mobile Google, obviously, obviously, you know, we're highlighting other athletes that showcase what it means to be a frugal athlete. Um, but, you know, when you can tie your personal brand into, you know, what you're trying to do, it tends to give it more um, authentic, authenticity um, and people tend to gravitate towards it more. And, you know, that's something that we talked about um, quite a bit and how we can kind of attach both um, entities to kind of build it into one. So I uh, appreciate you sharing that. Uh, we're going to have to do an update with the rest of the team. Um, but yes, you got any, you got anything else when it comes to the interns, like, you know, any recommendations for anyone trying to start, trying to find an intern? Yeah. And you kind of touched on it and um, I think it's just, yeah, just try it out. Try not to make it perfect. Like I think you said it like, Oh, we, our pitches need to be perfect. And, our plan needs to be perfect and all that. But I mean, just get out there, expose yourself and, and do it. That's how you learn, right? We're all learning and doing this. Um, I mean, I, I, I'm an IT professional. I don't, I wouldn't <laughs> to this side of the, <laughs> this side of the business, right? But um, I, I, I expose myself and now um, I, I'm working with you, hopefully growing my business. And um, I just kind of exposed myself and did it that way. But I remember early on, and I remember this a lot, that uh, we had a plan to, to pitch a company and we, we laid out our plan, okay? And then um, I, it didn't go as, as planned, right? They didn't, they didn't uh, follow up or anything. Um, and this was one of the ones where uh, I think it was kind of last minute. Um, I had to run the meeting. I think you had to. Oh, uh, yeah. To, uh, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, was, so what, what was I even the, doing? I think it was a COVID protocol with your team. Oh, yeah. Okay. And we had to take the test. Yeah. I was like, yo, Adrian, you're going to have to do it. <laughs> no warning yeah, or anything. I was, like, damn. I was like, damn, like I've never done this before, blah, blah, blah. But I'm glad that we had our plan and I stuck to it. And yeah. like at the end, I was bummed that they didn't reach out or they didn't like continue. Uh, it seemed like they were interested. And I was like, I'll be yeah, back. I think, I think my last, back. yeah, yeah, they didn't, they didn't get back to us. But like, I think my, like the last ask or the last service that, that I pitched. I don't think they liked that, but hey, it was part of the game plan yeah. and I went with it and it didn't go as planned. So we'll just adjust on the next on the next one and, and use it as a learning, a learning experience. So. Nah, yeah, that's a great point. Uh, they'll be back for sure. And uh, it, it, no just means not right now. So that's something that I've learned, you know, as we've started this and, you know, you know people have told me like, you know, take no's in stride. Um, how many no's can you get to a yes? You just got to take them in stride. So, I uh, know we talked about interns, you know, they're, you know, beneficial, you know, to your team, you know, um, on the other side, if you're like a, you know, business owner and you, you know, don't use interns, you know, just to use them, you know, you got to provide value to them as well. Um, they're doing, you know, a lot of great work. They're hungry, they're motivated. So if you can go out of your way to provide value to them, um, they'll be better for it and they will definitely 
uh, respect you and be thankful and grateful for you in the long run. Um, I want to talk about, yeah. oh, go ahead, go ahead. All right, especially with like the short window of, of interns, right? It's like three months max. So you, you got to maximize their time, your time in yeah. order to, uh, to get the most value on both sides. Respect. And then, so I want to talk about expenses because with any business, you know, starting out, you know, everyone's talking about, you got to, you know, Facebook ads, you got to market, you got to do all this. Um, but not everyone has a budget. And obviously, you know, uh, a frugal athlete, I, I'm not trying to spend unless we have to. So let's talk about the process of how we had to, you know, go over the budgets, you know, we had to cut some costs and different things. And then we had to analyze like where we can kind of double down in some areas. Yeah, so uh, one, I guess one of the first tasks that I also helped you out with was kind of organizing the expenses and uh, identifying what we were paying for, what subscriptions, what systems, or what software we were actually paying for. And then I think we found that we had two similar systems or two similar subscriptions that were doing the same thing for, for posting content. Mm -hmm. So we got rid of one of those. So that kind of opened up uh, a few dollars a month. And then... Um, so yeah, I would say uh, identify your, your expenses, identify uh, what it costs to take your business and then challenge each of them. Challenge, okay, do I really need this? Um, and then kind of grow into it as well. Um, if someone like, let's say tomorrow, I wanna start doing a, a podcast, right? Um, I wouldn't go out, buy a microphone, buy a light, buy a camera and do all that, right? I would put on my headphones and do it that way, start slow. Uh, I might invest maybe in a microphone to, to get started, but don't go all out at the beginning just because you don't know um, how it's gonna play out or if you're gonna need something different. Um, I always remember your rookie mistake with your with your website, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> like you, you paid for your website and you weren't really ready for a website. Um, so I think you gotta just ease into it um, when, when you're starting and, and, um, just keep monthly, quarterly, twice a year, right. Depends on how mature your, your company is. Um, do, do an expense audit, keep your budget and just challenge it, challenge each line item and say, do I really need this video editing software? Or can I get away with, um, this other one that's free or can I, um, do a one-time purchase of something? So, kind of challenge them all and don't, I guess, don't buy subscriptions just to buy them or just because it's like the new thing. Uh, just, yeah, challenge yourself before you buy it and see if you really need it. Um, so I think that was that was the beginning when I started. Uh, we kind of looked at that. And then uh, recently in December, we did our kind of our year end budget and see what, what we kind of bought during the year. Um, and some of them made sense. Uh, like uh, we, we needed a, a group account, a, a group email account yeah. that we needed to share. Uh, so we, we eased into that one, right? It's not like I got to you and then, oh, I have these three email addresses for frugal, but I only use this one. Um, you just had the one and then we, we, we grew into it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just um, at least twice a year, review your budget, review what you're spending it on. Um, and like this year, we, we identified that we needed a, a group Dropbox account, right? Um, so you'll, you'll start identifying stuff that, that, you, that you need, and then you'll start identifying the stuff that you've kind of outgrown or that you don't really do. You maybe tried it for a month and then you forgot <laughs> and you kept it. <laughs> um, that's why I, I, I personally like to do it monthly, but um, it, it always depends. No, oh, yeah, you, you brought some great points. It's like, for example, like as we built out our team, uh, when I first started, I was using Headliner and that was helping me because um, I couldn't do uh, the content from a, um, a, taking the podcast and building it out. And then from there, we learned how to do it via Canva uh, in combination with Dropbox and other platforms. And then now having a team and bandwidth, we were able to take Headliner or, or you know, V, you know, it was really popular. And this is sometimes a problem when it comes to, um, you know, building a business, you go, you kind of follow trends or you follow like, uh, so everyone was like, you have to have captions in your videos because you know, not, not everyone has a chance to, you know, you know, listen to what you're saying. Uh, so I got V'd right out the bat and I was like, all right, perfect. But the time it took for me to upload a video, put it on V to think, I was like, you know what? Uh, we figured that it didn't make sense. And because IG um, now has auto captions, um, 
you know, we take advantage of that. Um, if you're on LinkedIn, we put it on LinkedIn. If they don't see the caption, if they don't, whatever. Um, and then as we grow, hopefully, then we can come back and use captions if we want to do that. Um, it's not like our biggest concern. Um, what other things that we got rid of? Um, what's the other one we got rid of? Uh, we were going to get rid of re Restream, but we brought it back um, um, because we're, we're, you know, actively doing that. Um, but yeah, just trying to figure out ways to um, keep your margins uh, high in the sense of low expenses, high profit. Um, and what I really liked about, you know, Adrian, the streamliner Camargo uh, was that now we know, all right, this is what we got to get to make sure we are above water. You know, before the first couple of years, I was just going with the flow, wasn't really worried about profit or not. But now as I, you know, try to build out the team, you scale, it's like, all right, these are our expenses. This is how much it's going to cost us to, you know, keep the ship afloat. This is how much we need to make. So how many times are we pitching to so-and-so? How many people are we getting to possibly sponsor? How many people are we getting to finally do speaking engagements? So now it kind of gives more clarity um, with our goal, you know, whether it's a thousand courses, whether it's more financial um, engaging content. And I think that was, um, you know, a big thing when it came to, you know, identifying the expenses. Yeah, no, you're, you're trying to turn that, um, that uh, box and spreadsheet green instead of red. <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> no nah, respect so like, let, let, let's talk about that obviously we have the rookie mistakes course uh, we were supposed to finish it in three weeks it took six months but we already we have other um, pillars of our business as it pertains to building out revenue you know every business is different but sp specifically under the hood with the frugal athlete so our five pillars of business coaching consulting that's like one category. Then we got courses and within those courses, it's like, you can like, we can license it out. Um, we have it inbound, uh, so in-house, whatever. Um, sponsors and affiliate marketing. So, you know, with our content, you know, we can have um, affiliate market. So for example, as Adrian mentioned Trello, you know, if we put like a affiliate link with Trello, you guys get Trello, uh, we'll get paid for that. Um, and then sponsor content. If we go straight to Trello and say, yo, in this episode, we talked about Trello. We'd love for you guys to sponsor it. We think it, you guys can find value in that. Um, that's another way we make money. Uh, we have merch, um, although that's probably like our least um, percentage of revenue of like how we want to make our money. And then speaking engagements and workshops. So um, me personally, I think courses, speaking engagements, workshops, and then uh, coaching is going to be our like top three. And then as we continue to grow our brand sponsorships and affiliate marketing will definitely um, take a large percentage of that. And, you know, if we, if we grow our brand large enough, I know we got some ideas with another like extension of a frugal athlete that we're coming out with soon. Um, the merch can definitely take care of itself as well. So um, from your, from your lens, you know, talk about that. Yeah, I think um, obviously the speaking engagements, the coaching and the, and the courses, those, those are the, um, are the main ones. And then the sponsorships, the affiliate marketing, the merch, all that kind of, you grow into it as well, um, right? You're, you're not gonna get a bunch of affiliate marketing money uh, starting out, right? You're, you yeah. need to grow into it. You need to grow your brand, you need to grow your business. And that will organically come as, as you're growing, as you're, as you're, um, yeah, as you're growing. Um, but yeah, I guess from my side, it's again, just having a plan, um, make sure we have it, our, uh, our coaching documentation up to date that we can send our clients, Hey, um, uh, fill out this questionnaire, uh, standardize everything, uh, making sure that we're, um, uh, I guess we're, we're doing the same thing with every client. Right. And yeah. uh, just having it documented, having everything structured uh, with the courses as well. Um, it, it's, it's not difficult to, to start a course. Um, all, I guess how I would break it down is that, okay, you, you brainstorm ideas, you pick an idea, and then you, you do what, what I like to call a, a, a brain dump, right? You just, that's what I asked you to do for rookie mistakes. Just yeah. go into this, uh, into this Google doc and just type everything you want on there. Boom, 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 just it doesn't need to be structured, right? And then you go back, you structure it. Okay, you identify your chapters. And once you have like a good outline of your, of your course, then you can, uh, you can start to record your content and then the technology follows and exactly. you'll, you'll upload it um, 
to, to whatever, right? You don't need the highest version of, of, uh, of teachable, thinkific, all those uh, you can get by with, um, with the, the minimal stuff. And then as your needs grow, as your courses grow, uh, as your customer base grows, then you can grow into the, the subscription of those or the premium and whatever they called it. Um, you can grow into that as, as well. Um, but again, I think it kind of goes back to, to having everything organized and because um, I don't think you're, you're ever gonna get anything done if you're kind of pointed in all directions, just focus on one thing, document it, and then uh, you can come back to it pretty easily uh, once it's already documented and, and, um, and you're going on to another idea, but at least it's, at least it's there when, when you need to create another course or when you need to pitch another client or when you have another client for, for coaching or, or you have a, another speaking engagement, right? No, no two speaking engagements are going to be the same, but mm -hmm. you definitely can, can take the same template and, and apply it to, to the next speaking engagement and just kind of mold it a little bit differently uh, sprinkle in things or take things out. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of from my side and the organization piece of it. No, yeah, I love that. I appreciate you sharing. Um, I think what I want to talk about next is like some of the things that we've applied in terms of like helping us achieve these goals. So, you know, one way that, um, you know, we, we you know we talked about Trello, but like making content in bulk now. So, you know, before we were just like, Oh, that's a cool idea. Let's let's make that. But now it's like at least until March, we know. All right, these are the content that's where we're going to come out with. Obviously, there's going to be like new stories and stuff, or maybe like things that we need to talk about like right away. But having that plan in place and making content in bulk, um, how has it been helpful for you to kind of organize and help the the team understand like where we're trying to take everything? No, it, it's good because um, I mean, obviously with a food route that you're the one that's creating all the content and it's it's a lot it's a lot of content but now that you've planned out the next three months or so of okay these are my podcasts these are what i'm going to do for frugal fundamentals these are uh the other videos i'm going to do it it just helps us all out to um, one do our job quicker and two we don't have to be texting you calling you like hey man <laughs> can you get me this video <laughs> uh, <laughs> and yeah we like to hound you sometimes and uh -huh. And, and be like, hey, Moby, I need this, blah, blah, blah. But um, just having it planned out, it doesn't stress you out. It doesn't stress us out. We're not doing everything last minute. Um, so I mean, we can we can plan it out and um, do our job a lot better and efficiently um, than just doing it last minute or um, trying to think of a topic to, to go live on, right? Um, yeah. We can pull from a bucket of, um, of themes that we want to talk about. Um, just having that ready and, and guests line up, uh, which is probably the hardest part, right? Coordinating um, with the guests and, and uh, trying to get them on uh, the different um, uh, media that, that we do. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, that's basically it. Yeah, that's, that's something that I really wanted to make sure that we drove across because some people are like, oh, I got to do this content every week on a weekly basis. It gets tiring. So if you can do it, try to do it in bulk, map out your kind of schedule, you know, over quarters, you know, um, a book I would recommend is the 12 week year. I'm writing it down so we could put it in the show notes. Uh, um, I think people um, would definitely um, benefit from that. So um, Adrian, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Um, Obviously, you know, you, you know, you, you, your director of operations, the frugal, your IT manager, but you also have your own, you know, venture that you do. So talk about that before I let you go. And then any closing words that you want to let the audience know when it comes to, you know, some of the things that we got with the frugal athlete coming. Cool. No, no, I appreciate it. Appreciate the time. Uh, again, I'm excited for, for this year and, and frugal's growth and my involvement uh, with you and, and a frugal athlete. So it's, it's going to be a good year. Um, just to kind of recap, I would say uh, take your time and don't rush when you're when you're doing something, whether it's creating a course, where you're whether you're creating content, um, just ease into it and grow into it. Uh, make small and, and attainable goals for yourself. Um, don't obviously have your stretch your stretch goals, but um, don't make them unrealistic that you're not going to hit them. You need to hit some of them in order to keep uh, keep motivated. Um, yeah. yeah, and. and um, I mean, that, that's pretty much it. And in regards to, to what I do, right, I'm, an, I'm a full-time IT professional and I kind of help a Moby and a frugal athlete on the side, uh, just um, 
doing this uh, operation stuff and organizing the content, making sure that um, that we have a plan in place to, to do everything. So I'm, I'm still um, identifying what it is that my service is and, and what my business is, but essentially it kind of boils down to helping people and athletes uh, start their business, uh, organize their business and uh, streamline their business, right? You've said Adrian, the streamliner a lot. <laughs> I'm gonna have to take that. You're gonna get a trademark, man. <laughs> yeah, um, you gotta yeah, run with just, that. Yeah, yeah. I guess I guess what I do is, uh, and, and I, I really enjoy doing this, is just ident identifying what the problem is, identifying a process, and um, just breaking it down to a level where you can make it part of your day to day, and it's it's not something hard that you need to do. Um, it's just part of the day to day, and it's just another another checklist uh, item that, that you have throughout the day. So um, uh, yeah, if, if you know uh, of anyone that, that needs help or you need help with your business or, or you're trying to get into, into something in, in the uh, sports media space or really any other space um, that requires organization, uh, I'd love to help, help you out with that. Yeah, so yeah, make sure you guys check out Adrian the Streamliner Camargo. Uh, you basically say you're trying to go somewhere you have a vision, you have, um, you know, you have a map, you know, the destination, but he's going to be the one that helps you get to the points. Like you need to take I-5, you need to stop here, you need to turn right here, you need to turn left here, go 20 miles here. Like that's what he does. And he puts it in the most simplest forms for you to understand it. Um, he's helped out a frugal athlete tremendously, you know, any, um, and he's, you know, he's, in the process of helping out a lot more athletes as well. So yeah, make sure you guys tap in with him, make sure you guys tap in with us. Um, you know, so we wanted to get Adrian on, you know, so you guys can get a different taste of, you know, athlete entrepreneur, not just from my, uh, my standpoint. Um, but yeah, make sure you guys tune in. I'm going to be doing these uh, every so often, not as often as I planned originally. And that's one of the things that I learned from last year. Sometimes, you know, less content, but more fulfilling is better than just content forced. So, um, but yeah, tap into athlete entrepreneur, trying to get tips is how we grow. Um, I'm probably going to do like, um, how, how do I say, maybe like a, a pitch process for you guys to see, um, you know, how we, you know, pitch someone. And so, you know, just trying to give you guys as athlete entrepreneurs, kind of the roadmap or, or some lessons that you guys can apply and take, take for yourselves. Uh, but with that being said, uh, yeah, make sure you follow, subscribe, uh, get the get the get the course, uh, follow the channels. Uh, what else we got, Adrian? Yeah, just stay tuned. There's there's a lot of stuff in the works. I think I ended the last post podcast like this, but just stay tuned. We have a lot of stuff coming out, um, and yeah, just uh, make sure you follow along. Yeah, so I'll catch you guys later. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, it. Thanks, movie.